It's 2024 and Apple still doesn't get it. You still don't have a toggle for auto brightness. You still can't rename photos and videos. You can't pause video recordings. You still have no control over home screen organization and a lot more. More? It's the little, little things that can annoy any user who has tasted Android. Let me tell you. First, on the iPhone, you can't very easily set brightness to auto or to manual. Like on Android, turning auto brightness on or off is a matter of a swipe and one click. Easy peasy. You'll be amazed how it's done on the iPhone. At first, you'll be like, oh, they don't even have this option in the phone. But there's a lengthy way to do it. Go into settings, accessibility, display and text size, scroll all the way and now you can turn it on or off. See, it's so easy. Okay, let me come to the next one and this is not talked about enough. Why can't I rename photos and videos on my iPhone? Just see here, there's no way for me to any way rename photos and videos. Now, of course, I can first save it as a file by doing so and then go into files and renaming it there. But that makes no sense. And let me tell you why. Because when I want to transfer a photo from my iPhone to my Windows laptop using a cable, all my photos and videos show up like this. And there's no way for me to look for that specific photo because it just won't let me rename. On Android, I can rename by going into editing info and when I connect it to my windows, I just go in the photos folder and there you go. And for those of you who are going to tell me that, hey, just use AirDrop, it's really fast. Let me tell you that only works with MacBooks and Mac Studios and sorry to burst your bubble, but the uh, majority of the world still uses windows. Now, the one thing that iPhones are yet to be good at is their phone dialer. It's so archaic and it's so, so sad. Hear me out. So first of all, it shows all calls in the recent calls list. Calls from Google Meet, Skype, WhatsApp. Like even my Alexa drop-in is part of my recent calls. But why? It's horrible. But this is where it gets really stupid. If someone called me using Skype, and if I want to call them back and tap on their contact, it calls them back on their Skype. Like if you had to call them on Skype, wouldn't you normally just go into Skype and then call them? Normally, I would just want to call their phone, right? Right call list should only be about phone calls. At most, they can include FaceTime and WhatsApp, but any other app, I think it's just dumb. So dumb. Also, on iPhone, let's say you have a contact that has two numbers. The first time you call them by tapping one number, that becomes the default. What? What just happened? First of all, iOS doesn't tell you that it did that for you. And secondly, do you have any idea how to change that default? <laughs> Look, on Android, you could just go to the contact, tap on the number and just change it. And it says set default. I mean, it couldn't get any more obvious. But on the iPhone, you've got to long press the call icon and just choose whichever one you want as default. And as you do that, it also initiates the call. Now you can cut it and without any kind of acknowledgement or confirmation, congratulations, you've set that number as the default. Okay. But my biggest gripe with the iPhone Still no T9 dialing. Like you know on Android, you could open your dialer and tap numbers that correspond to the letters of the contact. So let's say I type G A U and now I can see all Gaurav's here. On iPhone, I obviously can't do that in the dialer. Now I could go to Spotlight and search but it will only show up the most frequently or recently contacted Gaurav. Sure, you could type the whole name but isn't that easy? Now I know a lot of you are going to say just use Siri and that's really fast. Very fast. But would you do that when you're sitting in an office with colleagues around or when you're sitting in a group with friends or when you're sitting in a restaurant or in a bus? And let's be mindful of the fact that Siri does not work very well or equally well as it does in English in any other language. Now, coming to the next one, and I've mentioned this before, but it's still as annoying as it was in 2023. There is still no way to pause while you're recording videos. I mean, come on, Apple. Like Android phones have had this for more than half a decade or Probably more actually. It's been a thousand years. You can shoot parts you want, pause, and then continue to shoot later. And that way just have one video that's meaningful. iPhones, you will end up with multiple clips because it just won't let you pause a recording in between. But what do iPhone users then do? Please let me know in the comments. I mean, do you guys keep shooting just unnecessary footage or do you guys start and then stop and then start and then stop and then just have like five multiple videos of the same thing? Okay, next. It's a pain to organize your home screen the way you want. I mean, I can't place the widget just anywhere I want. I can't place the app icons anywhere I want. 
And sure, there are horribly complex ways of achieving that, but the general audience is not going to go through all of that. Android is easy. Pick the widget, drop wherever you want. Pick the app icon, drop it wherever you want. And you can make yourself a new home screen every day, if that's what you'd like. But iPhones, well, they are always going to look like this. Same old, same old. Now, you know, on Android, if you want to get rid of an app, all you do is long press on the app icon, click on uninstall, and that's one way to do it. Or you could go to the Play Store and just uninstall from there. Or when you're in cleaning mode, you could uninstall multiple apps in one go in the Play Store. But on the iPhone, it's not that simple. You've got to remove each one separately, one by one, slow and steady. Could it be any faster? Chandler? Now, you know, when you're setting up a new iPhone, you get the option of transferring everything from your old iPhone to your new iPhone by scanning some sort of fancy QR code. But if you don't do it at that moment, you don't get the option of doing it later. It's that one choice, one option only. And if you don't take it, it's gone. And sure, if you still want to do it, the only way to do that is to start from scratch, which is to erase your new iPhone all over again and start as if it just came to you. On Android, you know, like for Samsung phones, there's Samsung Switch for OnePlus. I think there's something like a OnePlus Switch. And they let you transfer data and accounts anytime you want. Now, I could go on and on, but I've actually done quite a bit of rant uh, pointing out more flaws in iOS in these two videos. So definitely, if you want to have some fun, watch them. And hey, if you did enjoy watching this video, make sure you hit that like button and please do consider subscribing. It goes a long way in supporting the channel. And share this with your iPhone friends. See you.